go. Hello and welcome <laughs> to uh, Laid Law Research and Leadership Program Info Session Number Two. And we can get started now with AJ. So hi, everybody. I uh, hope you're doing well. My name is AJ Ehrenstein. I use he, him pronouns. I'm Assistant Vice President of Lifelong Success at Barnard. I'm sure by now, uh, certainly sophomores in the group, who some of whose names look really familiar from the Preceptor Program, from uh, various Beyond Barnard activities. You're sick of hearing from me in your email inbox. Uh, hopefully you've stayed subscribed. Uh, I hope you're doing well, that you're healthy, that you're getting sleep, you're staying hydrated at the end of the semester. But really, my, my kind of fun job at the start of this presentation is to say thank you for being here, uh, and that I'm so excited to see those of you who are here to learn about the Laid Law Program. It is just an incredible opportunity now in its second year on Barnard's campus, a great collaboration between Beyond Barnard and the Athena Center. You'll hear a little bit from Lindsay today. You'll hear a little bit from Christine Valenza Shin who is Interim Executive Director of Beyond Barnard, and you'll hear from Chris Sneed, who's at the Athena Center as an Associate Director and a great partner over there. I wanna make a pitch to you all, and then I'm gonna disappear and let, the, let my colleagues do the good work of introducing the program. It is such a great opportunity just to apply to Laid Law. We always get questions about my odds of getting into the program. How many people apply? Is it competitive? And I want to, I'm here to say today, we've structured the application process in such a way that everyone who applies gets a great chance to meet faculty who, regardless of whether you end up participating in laid law, end up being great advisors, mentors, and collaborators as you start to think about what it means to conduct research across disciplines here at the college. Conducting research as an undergrad is one of the things that makes Barnard distinctive. And I think that, uh, I don't know if y'all have seen the laid law posters from the last semester that are hanging by the mailroom. Maybe that's why you're here today. You saw them and you're like, oh my gosh, I wanna do something exactly like that. But the quality and the caliber of the work that gets produced here by you all is so high and so tremendous. And it's such a great thing to be a part of. Um, not only from the standpoint of programs like laid law, but also just to watch you grow as researchers and scholars throughout the application process. So I'm sure you'll have tons of questions. I'm sure that um, you know you'll get a, a lot of information. I want you to let let it congeal and and sit on it for a little bit and think about who you'd be excited to work with and how you might like to use the application process as a way of kickstarting your research work here at the college because no matter, how you participate in research here, it is something that will transform your education at Barnard. Um, our colleagues are great. I'm so excited to have them here. I'm gonna hand it back off to Lindsay. Um, but again, it's a stressful time of year. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to be here for a virtual session. You won't regret it. And I hope, and I'm looking forward to reading your applications over the course of the next couple of months. And as always, if you need anything from Beyond Barnard, be in touch, beyondbarnard at barnard.edu. Otherwise, Lindsay, thanks for leading today's conversation. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye. All right. Thanks. Um, and so, Christine and Chris, if you want to introduce yourselves um, before we move away from here. Uh, just saying hello. I'm Christine Valenza Shin. I'm the interim executive director for Beyond Barnard. And uh, like AJ, very excited to start uh, with another cohort. Um, we last year was the the first year of the program here at Barnard, and um, it was a, a learning curve for sure. Um, but definitely one of our favorite parts is the application process and then um, the uh, the research process and, and seeing what you all come up with. So uh, excited to be here and tell you a little bit more about the program. Welcome. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Um, very quickly, I am here representing Athena. My name is Chris Need. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm the Director of Applied Learning here. Um, and so hello to all the folks. There are some names that I'm like, oh, I've seen some of these names before. Um, so also, um, hello, and we're excited to um, build with you all. Um, now, Lindsay, I will throw it back to you. Thanks. So yeah, so I'm Lindsay Granger Weaver, uh, Senior Associate Director of Internship Programs. I've been in your inbox reminding you of this event. <laughs> so thanks for, for coming and making all that effort worthwhile. Um, so this is the agenda for this workshop. Um, like I said, it's session two 
Um, in the reminders for this, there was a, a link to the recording of session one, um, and I will resend that along with this recording afterwards. Um, but basically, you know, we're going to go over a little bit about what the program is, but focus primarily on the application timeline and then dig really deeply into the components. And the reason for that is we, you know, sometimes application processes are tricky and you kind of can't think about what they are or start to think of like worst case scenarios for what we could be asking. And we want to make this as transparent as possible because one, we want as many of you to apply, but we also want to read really high quality applications <laughs> because we do read them all and we interview a lot of folks. And so we want to make sure that, you know, we can demystify the process in any way possible so that you feel like really excited to apply, you know exactly what you're getting into, and then we can, um, we can have fun reading these. And so then after that, we'll talk about securing a mentor and at the end, some next steps and then open it up to any questions you may have about what we're talking about here or from the last one, if you weren't able to attend and ask then, but watched or have marinated on some questions. So, um, so we have plenty of time for that. But first, I'll hand it to Christine to talk about the program. So a couple of key things about Laid Law. We're going to start with eligibility. Um, it's pretty broad eligibility, which is one of the reasons we were so excited to partner with the Laid Law Foundation and be able to offer this here. So all first years and sophomores are eligible to apply. International students are eligible. Uh, all majors all career interests. There are no, there's no limitations on that. So, um, you know, uh, don't, one of the key things here is to uh, not put any limitations on yourself, not talk yourself out of applying. Um, STEM students are welcome to apply, but we encourage you to look at um, the SRI opportunity. That's sometimes a better match. Um, it's not that we won't consider applications for, um, you know, lab, lab research. Uh, we absolutely do. And, and, and we had people in the cohort, um, the first year cohort, but uh, you just want to look at it in terms of fit and, and what's the best fit for you and, and the research you want to do. Um, and, uh, and then key thing though is that this is a two summer commitment. Um, so you're committing to a summer of research and a summer of leadership in action. Um, and so you need to be able, it's just six weeks approximately of each summer. Um, and it's generally at the beginning part. So it doesn't preclude you from doing other things afterwards, but that's an important thing to um, keep, keep in mind. And then there are additional activities throughout the year. They're not particularly onerous, but um, you know, we, we do um, follow up during the year and, and keep the cohort together. What are some of the reasons you'd want to do laid law? It's a, it's an, um, an inclusive, dynamic, curious community. I love that. Uh, that it's a great quote, a safe space to nerd out. If you are a, the type of person who likes to dig in and find out and, and just have the opportunity to explore, ask questions, figure out answers, pose more questions, this is the place for you. Um, the program emphasizes leadership and the consideration of global and local challenges and the connections between them. Um, the program is also very interested overall in encouraging people who are thinking about cross-disciplinary and cross-project relationships. Um, again, none of these are absolute requirements, but these are the things that the program um, emphasizes. And, um, and so, you know, if, if this speaks to you, this is a good fit for you. Um, and similarly that, you know, not having these strict boundaries of investigation, but being comfortable with looking at things across um, uh, from different perspectives, using different tools. It is challenging um, and it is at its core about serving others, finding solutions to problems. So um, you, there'll be a learning curve for you as well, um, especially if uh, this is your first sort of um, external research project, um, but we're here to both support and challenge you. Um, and, and if you're someone who's motivated by trying to solve problems, serve the underserved, um, this is the place for you. So the key program elements is that uh, if you are accepted into the program, um, spring and summer of 2023, there's an orientation and leadership retreat. Um, and then you have six weeks of faculty mentored research from May um, to July. Uh, there is a research symposium in September. That was the original event for which those wonderful posters were created. Um, and then there's a Laid Law Foundation conference in October that's held for across colleges. Uh, this, this past year, it was in Boston for the North American College um, participants. And 
Lindsay, I forget where it was. London, was it? In London. London for Aren't the um, European schools that participate. Uh, although we were able to select uh, one student to send to London. So that was uh, fun as well. Um, in the second summer, uh, you do six weeks of a leadership in action project, which is either applied research or a project at an external site. And the goal there is to develop leadership, project management and advocacy skills. Um, and then throughout the two academic years, 2023, um, sorry, uh, yeah, um, and then throughout 23, that bridge year, 2023 to 2024, there'll be some supportive programming, cohort-based activities, um, and, um, and information about um, ongoing, ongoing projects. Funding and support always an important piece of this. You get a stipend, um, which is $675 a week for six weeks, right? And that gets paid out in installments over the course of the summer. Um, and both summers target what Barnard, off, Barnard and Columbia describe as summer A. So it's generally the uh, first six weeks of summer following graduation week. Um, so it's the end of uh, right at the end of May, all of June and into the beginning of July are the uh, is the target period. Um, and then there is additional support to um, for um, on campus housing, travel and then other costs associated with the conduct of, of um, research. There's a little bit of money available during the first summer. There's not a lot of research related expenses generally the first summer, but the second summer with your leadership in action project, there may be more expenses and the foundation supports that as well. Thanks. Those are key elements. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And so we dig a lot deeper into just the program itself and more about the foundation and things like that in um, the first session. So if you want a refresher, can uh, head back, head to Handshake, and it's linked to the, the resources page for Laidlaw. But now we'll dig into the application timeline and components. So this is the general timeline for both the application and uh, <laughs> the summer one. So just big, the first bullet or the first one, you know, when you are here, information sessions, um, the application will open in January and close in February. Those exact dates are yet to be determined, but most likely around the start of classes. Um, you can look out for that application opening. There's no need to fill it out right away. <laughs> so you can wait, you can have your break. Um, and truly break and then uh, come back and, and have time to fill out the application and submit before the February close date. Um, there'll also be interviews for select applicants depending on you know what the selection committee decides. It could be everyone, it could not be everyone, but that would be TBD. Um, in March, students are notified of their admission. Um, you have to tell the foundation by April 1st, and so that is the hard deadline for that. Um, and you'll prep for the summer in April, also finish your classes, that's more important, <laughs> prepping for the summer. Um, if the calendar stays the same as last year during that interim period between the end of classes and the beginning of summer A will be leadership training and kickoff for um, the research program for the first summer and then in some summer A period um, into your research projects and start the weekly cohort meetings, which are a really great place to both talk about your research, but also bond as a group and build that community of, you know, emerging leaders and scholars that this program really is great at cultivating. So now the application components. And so this one of the, the actual questions on the application is talk is you have to tell us what you want to research. So what do you want to know? Um, and no more than 500 words describe the questions that you would most like to research, what you hope to learn, and how you would envision pursuing this research. And I see people taking notes, you will get this, so no need to copy all of this down. Um, but when thinking of your research statement, you really want to again, use this as a safe space to nerd out. If it's something you're super interested in, tell us why. Be connect to it. Tell us why you're interested. Tell us why other people should be interested. Um, how you plan to address it in six weeks is a really big part. Um, it's something that, you know, if you want to end war, that may not be able to happen in six weeks, but you may want to have to think about scaling that down a little bit um, or think of, you know, in what way could you 
start the process of ending war <laughs> in six weeks. Um, the mentor support, if you have a mentor, you can put that in there, but really it's more about how you plan to engage a mentor. So what you would look for, um, what you would like your mentor to do, whether it's, you know, provide, like help you find resources, help you synthesize your ideas. Um, if you've done this work, whether like if it, a lot of people in the first cohort have these ideas start from class papers um, or with text that they'd engaged in their classes. So you can say more about that too. Uh, but really the key is why do you want to work through this question that you have as a laid law scholar? Because you can work through things in a lot of different ways, uh, but why this program? So what about the program that, you know, the things that Christine just talked about and what we dug into in the first session, what parts of that are really attractive to you in addition to this research? Um, and it's really good practice for applying to anything else where they want to know why us, if this were a job or for a specific fellowship, like why this program. And so really tying your research statement into why the laid law program. And so the next part would be telling us about your mentor. If you have a mentor already, there will be space for you to fill that in. If not, you can list, um, give us a few faculty members that you have in mind, folks that you've reached out to. And then the, after this part of this, um, after this section, we'll go into kind of like some tips for approaching mentors, but you want to include official titles. And just a note that people not on 12 month contracts may not be eligible. There was some hiccup with this last year, some questions about it because this work is conducted in the summer. Not everybody is has a contract for the summer. And so that was something that came up, especially with if some folks in certain departments. Um, and so if you have specific questions about that, you can email laidlaw at barnard.edu um, just to get some, some clarity. It wasn't an overall issue, but it is something to be aware of as you're thinking about mentors that not all faculty will be able to, but they may be able to connect you to someone who can. So just think about that. Um, Leadership in Action, or LIA, as it is called. Um, so this section, this question is just like, what are you thinking about for the second summer? And it's projecting a lot, <laughs> but the purpose of this program is to do the research and then have it play out somewhere in the world. And so thinking about how you imagine what you do in the first summer could translate to the second, whether it's, you know, if you're writing a curriculum for something or want to go to an archive and dig deeper into the research or want to take a program and figure out how it can work in the, in the real world, this is where you start to really think about the application of the work. Um, one thing I've learned about laid law as like throughout since this time last year is that they're not necessarily developing researchers, they're just developing people who know how to use research to act upon problems. And so that's pretty key. And so this acting upon the problem piece is where you know, we want you to talk about in this, um, in this part of the application. And you know, it could be that the, some of the central projects are interesting to you or that they, um, they align with your interests. I'm not sure if those are publicly available, but if they are, you can <laughs> figure that out. Um, but just like start to think, what's the global strategy here? Where could you maybe take something that you research domestically and pull it somewhere around the world or, you know, a different part, different, you know, cross-cultural engagement with your work, so. And the next part, leadership, in the title of the program, research and leadership. Um, so discuss some of the ways that you define the word leadership. Um, what leadership attributes are useful in terms of developing your future professional goals? So center yourself in this, you know, leadership can take many forms. I'm thinking a lot about, you know, when I was in elementary school and starting essays with the dictionary defines leadership as, like, don't do that because this is about you. It's about your ideas of leadership, how you've engaged as a leader on campus or in your life. Um, and knowing again, takes many forms, give us examples, show us things from real life. Um, don't just talk about it, show how you've been about it, and then, you know, draw the conclusions from the evidence that you have. Um, there's no right or wrong answer here, but it's really clear in reading these if you're just kind of like making it up, or if it's really, if this idea of leadership and what it means to you and how you, how you plan to conduct yourself as a leader are actually grounded in fact. Um, 
generally just one major overarching tip for all of the components of this application is don't tell us what you think we want to hear. Um, really be truthful and honest and have you as kind of like the, the through line here. Don't try to write things and think like, oh, well, they're going to want to see this. They're going to see that. Like we want to get to know you. And so answer these questions and write these up in a way that helps us do that. Um, and then there's like an additional information. It's an optional question, but if you feel like you need to explain something, um, if there are other circumstances that you think maybe would help your application or help us understand things that didn't fit in other places or weren't quite right for maybe your, your research statement or leadership, um, let us know here. This isn't the place to explain like an A minus because that's not a thing. <laughs> But it's nothing that needs to be explained. It's not a special circumstance. Um, but really just let us know like anything else about why you might be interested in this program. It's completely optional. So. Um, finally, have a letter of recommendation. We email to um, laidlaw at barnard.edu. It can be from a Barnard or Columbia faculty member who's taught you or just someone who's taught you while you're in college or done research with or that you've done research with. Um, while in college. It does not have to be your research mentor. Um, we wanted to get a sense of how you are in the classroom, how you are with people. Um, this is a cohort based program. And so we want people who know how to play nice with others or know how to respectfully not play nice with others, just be respectful. Um, someone who knows you best is key. It may be tricky, especially if you're a first year or if you're a sophomore who had a bunch of classes on Zoom last year. Um, and so it's good to go to office hours, um, ask early, like now would be a good time to start to have these conversations, ask as face-to-face -face as possible. So not in an email, but either at office hours or on Zoom. Um, we have the Laidlaw website, so it's like barnard.edu slash Laidlaw. Um, I can share that, but you can send that to them as well so that they can get some information on the program. Um, and then it's usually helpful to share draft application materials, um, especially if what you're writing about for your research statement is something maybe that you learned in their class or an idea that you started in you know, conjunction with something that they've done or is aligned with their research. So um, sharing with them just so that they can get tips and get a sense of where you're going with this is helpful. A resume. Um, Beyond Partner is essentially a career office, so we take resumes very seriously here. Um, and we can usually tell when it has been reviewed or not. So please have your one page resume reviewed by either a peer career advisor um, or one of our full time advisors. Handshake appointments are available, and you can schedule one now, probably for January for someone. Um, we get it done early. We have tips for things on YouTube, um, definitely tailor it to the program. And so if you've done research in the past, for example, have a research section or a leadership and service section, because those are the key components of the program. Um, it's really good practice for tailoring a document for a job or for a fellowship or for another application. And so kind of take it as that. And a transcript, unofficial is fine. It's good practice again, because you'll have to access transcripts um, in the future, but also know that your grades are fine. Um, we're really looking at this for courses and also just data because sometimes the foundation wants uh, <laughs> transcripts, but it's not about us looking at your grades. It's about us seeing kind of like how you've engaged in the topic area. Um, and so don't let that discourage you at all from applying. Um, and if there are things you want to to share or things that you maybe feel like need to be explained, then that's what that optional essay is for. So that's the application. Um, we'll keep moving into securing a mentor and then open up to questions. So in securing a mentor, I think one of the key points is to know that it, so yeah, so these are based on questions that we received last year. Um, so where do you find a mentor? You can look up your classes, um, see if they're the easiest way is if you're learning about something in class or have had coursework that's related to what you're researching or what you would like to research and ask that professor or someone in that department. See if they can recommend if they are not able to be a research mentor over the summer. Um, asking for perspectives from other faculty members or even your peers. And so some, 
I think the folks from cohort one may have some really good tips on, on mentors and who may be a good mentor, considering that they no longer have to mentor in this um, in summer two. And so it could be like a handoff situation. Um, just reading faculty bios is really helpful, seeing what they've published, seeing who, you know, whose work aligned with your ideas. It doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one match but rather someone who either maybe a methodology is similar to what you are drawn to or just a general subject matter. Um, so keep that in mind that it doesn't have to be like that very niche <laughs> research that they do. Um, in approaching a potential mentor, office hours, email a time to speak, don't ask in the email if they can be a mentor. Um, and when you show up to these meetings, do, it, do some homework. So read something that they've written, familiarize yourself with their research agenda, and also familiarize yourself with the program um, so that if they have questions for you, then you can ask that or know which resources to point them to. And just remember that it has to work for you too. So even if the person is like an amazing leader in the field, but they only have time to talk to you once during that six week summer period, that may not be the best space. Um, think about what you would like to get from that relationship. Um, think about what you may need for the summer um, and find someone who may be flexible enough, has that availability, um, who can perhaps set you on a path earlier than that may start date. Um, so just like start to really consider yourself in the process. Also know that you do not need to have secured a mentor at the time of application. Um, so, you know, don't let that stop you from applying. And just keep in mind, folks may say no, folks get very busy, but keep trying and um, we're here to help if you need that type of assistance. And so next steps and then questions. So think about if you really want to pursue this opportunity. <laughs> um, that's really the key. Think, is this something, is this a place that I would, I feel like I could grow? Um, is this the right place for the research that I want to do? And if you decide yes, then you can think, start thinking about a research topic or a specific research question. Um, think about who you who may um, be a good mentor for you here and the Barnard campus or Columbia and begin to set up meetings with people. Um, faculty members like, like some of you tend to disappear during winter break. And so it may be good to have a list and then reach out, set up meetings for January. Um, review the previous laid out info session for just like other tips, especially for um, the panel with the current cohort. I think they had some really great information about finding mentors, approaching research, what they wish they knew. Um, and then email laidlaw at barnard.edu with any questions. It goes to a couple people. <laughs> so someone will answer. <laughs> and thank you. And please now answer, ask us any questions. We are here. Anything about this, any be anything about um, previous session, things that you've been thinking about, you can come off mute. Um, I see one question in the chat, so we answer that. Can the mentor be from Columbia as well? Yes, they can be from Columbia. Um, all right, I see a hand, Marina, you wanna? Yes, hi, um, I was wondering, uh, since uh, yeah. we've lost sort of focusing on like interdisciplinary or cross-disciplinary um, research, uh, should the mentor like uh, have a like interest in both areas that you're sort of trying to grasp at, or should it be more focused in through like the research aspect, or maybe more focused in like one of the disciplines, or how should we approach that? Um, I think that goes into thinking about what you would like from a mentor because you may have understand maybe the, the topic area, but need help with the methodology or vice versa. Um, and so in looking okay. for a mentor, really think about your own needs as well, um, because that's ultimately how it's gonna be most successful is that they fill a need for you. But it doesn't have to be a specific thing. It's just somebody who you know that you can go to if you need support. Okay, perfect. Hi, Amy. Hi, um, would it be like, I guess, possible or like allowed to apply for both Athena Fellows and Laidlaw? Yeah, 
you can apply to as many programs. However, you can only participate in one Barnard funded program at a time. Yeah. So you and would have to make a choice. And yeah. Athena Fellows is in this semester. And so I think, um, I don't think, and please correct me, Lindsay, since Athena Fellows is either fall or spring, it is not technically summer. So I think that it is not overlapping, which is a good thing. Am I correct? You are correct because our stipends are covered in the summer. And so we can't pay you for two things at once, basically. Um, so yeah, so you can do both of those. Um, I have a question, does your mentor have to be a faculty member at Barnard or Columbia College or can it be a faculty member at Columbia University who's a mentor from Teachers College? Teachers College is tricky. And Christina, I don't know if you want to jump in here with the mentor piece um, with the affiliate schools. Uh, I'm trying to, to remember if we had an issue with it should work out as long as they're part of the university, it should work out. But uh, the reason it's tricky is that different schools within the university have different agreements with the larger university structure and Barnard and Teachers College being two of the more independent ones. So there's separate budgeting and things like that. But if you're, I wouldn't say no, um, but um, you know, you could definitely explore that, but that's, it's a possibility, but we would need to no more details as things unfolded um, to make sure that all went smoothly. Yeah, and the tricky part there is because uh, mentors are compensated financially. And so we have to make sure we are able to compensate. <laughs> and that's why there are these parameters. It's not that they're not doing amazing work and they provide great guidance. It's like, can we pay you for this thing? Because we respect people's time, we would like to pay them for it. So that's really the key there. Um, the other question, another question in the chat, and then we'll get to the hand. How many people are usually chosen for the program? So the ideal and maximum cohort size is 25. So we would try to meet that every single time. And last year we did. Um, Marina. And just for the letter of recommendation, I understand that you probably want to choose somebody that knows you well, that's seen you in the classroom, that knows how you collaborate with others. But do you think um, there is any advantage in choosing a professor that is uh, engaged with the sort of discipline that you are interested in pursuing research in, or should that not sort of be that strong of a factor to consider? I think, uh... I mean, my, my take on recommendation letters is they're more like character, <laughs> character driven here, um, not necessarily discipline because the research may change and a lot of times in this first cohort it did. And so if it's someone who can't, who aren't gonna tell us that you will be great in the program um, and that you'll be somebody who others can collaborate with and you can work well and you know contribute. Those are the things when reading rec letters that definitely um, are up higher than some of like the, the disciplinary stuff here. Any other thoughts from the <laughs> folks who read applications? No, I would agree. I, it's not it's not as important that the person is in the same academic field or the topic that you're thinking about and more how well do they know you, you know, as a student, as a person. So, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Oh, I'm just going to echo that. Um, also choose folks that would choose you uh, for a recommendation letter uh, that is like the best way to get a really good one is are like looking for the professors who are rooting for you. Usually they tell you. Um, and in my experience um, on many sides of that coin is you'll know the professors and often they are the ones that are like, I will write a recommendation letter for you. Or if they know your name in a lecture, very good sign um, that they can uh, move on and like have some kind of positive um, because those letters really um, sound different because they, that connection kind of shows. Yeah, definitely. Um, another just piggybacking on this, can a letter of rec be from a high school professor or mentor? It should be someone from college um, who knows you specifically from Barnard or Columbia. Um, if you're a transfer student, then someone from another institution may be helpful, but it should be college professor, not high school person. Um, and then can mentors be from the medical center? Again, we'll just have to make sure that we can compensate 
And so if there is a specific person, um, just email laidlaw at barnard.edu and let us know and we can kind of have that guidance available um, at the time of the application open, just so that it, there is more clarity on who can mentor. Um, Elizabeth, I see your hand. I just wanted to piggyback on the letter of recommendation. I was curious um, if your letters of recommendation should be specific to laid law, like when you reach out to a professor, because I know like for applying for other fellowships, they also require letters of recommendation. Um, yeah. Yep, it should be specific to laid law. So you can, they should let us know why you'd be good for this program. And uh, for folks, if you're really busy and you're like, oh, no, I'm going to be asking for a lot of things from a professor, uh, my pro tip is usually if you already know you're going to apply to five things that prof and the, it's like one professor you have a really good relationship with, make a spell spreadsheet with like details that are like, I'm applying to this and, and this thing. These are all the dates. And then it seems less uh, like if you're worried, like, oh, is this going to be overwhelming or annoying? On one hand, they're there to support you. On the other, if you do the work to organize for them, it usually makes things a little bit smoother. Yeah, professors really like <laughs> to do this part. <laughs> um, there, it's part of their, it's literally part of their job description to support students and to write do things like write recommendation letters, mentor those kinds of things. There are also things that have been done for them. And so it is really a part of being an academic and, you know, and a teacher is to do this. And so some students feel that hesitation of like, oh, they're busy, they're doing too much, but this is part of their job. And a lot of them really do like to do it. So. And I'll, I'll jump into just to say that um, from there, you, they know this, you may not know this, they don't have to write five recommendation letters from scratch you know, targeting each individual opportunity. They're going to repeat a lot of the same things, but but they should customize it somewhat and, you know, have a sense of what laid law is about and, and why you'd be a particularly good match for this opportunity, so. Um, if you've done remote research in a college with a professor at another university, can they be our rec letter? Or should they be at Barnard or Columbia? They should be at Barnard or Columbia, um, yes. <laughs> yeah any other thoughts on that I think and I think that's because it's a very they can speak to the very specific situation of being a student at Barnard and and or Columbia um a lot of them and if it was remote that kind of relationship and that interaction with people that we're looking for and that like how when we're putting together a cohort um how that would play out is may not be as strong as somebody who has seen you actually interact with people. I do want to add, I know it can be daunting to, to in some cases, to find the right person, you know, or to think of a, a list of people you might ask. It's fine to, um, both first years and sophomore, it's fine to go to somebody who was, uh, you were in their class. Um, it might not have been a seminar, um, but it might've been a large class. I may not have gotten to know you super well personally. You can get to know them and they can get to know you a little bit better now. So for instance, if you did well in the class or if you got great feedback on a particular project or a paper, um, go see them in office hours or make an appointment, bring bring the paper or you know, uh, reference, you know, reference it in the email, remind them of the grade you got overall and the feedback they gave you and say, you'd like to talk a little bit about, you know, possibility of them writing a recommendation. And they can, you can in, in that moment sort of have an opportunity, you know, to talk a little bit about why you're interested in the program and get, they get to know you a little better. And, and that can be, that can be fine um, as well, so. Yeah, and sometimes too, um... Yeah, mm -hmm. like a lot of the really good rec letters from last year were people who were just, again, the, the faculty member kind of nerded out on the student a little bit. <laughs> um, and so it is good. And you can tell that like that relationship was built um, and that, you know, so I think what Christine said is spot on, like building it now, like talking to them about your research, your interests, they're invested in, in your development. And so use that for sure. Can I ask the, the crowd a quick question? And I see that question, I, I've been seeing you, so I'll be quick. How many of you are um, like, ooh, I already have some idea of a person that I could ask, one or more, um, do some kind of reaction um, thing? 
So I'm seeing some hands, some thumbs up. Oh, this is a lot. Okay. Like I'm seeing like about half of the folks on this call reacting. Like you have some idea um, for the folks where you're like, oh, this sounds a little rough. Again, the what Christine and Lindsay just mentioned are really good strategies of think of the folks that you had positive um, interactions with in class. This is your time to cultivate the relationships. It's still happening. The semester's still on. Um, and some general tips I would offer for everyone. If you're in the, the crew of like, I need to build a relationship, um, it's a good time to make sure that your final papers and things are on time and send thank you notes at the end of the semester. There's nothing like a thank you note. If there was a lecture that really stood out to you, something that helped you choose your major, right? There's some kind of sweetness that you can offer and you don't have to like, don't lie about it, do something genuine um, because those things actually are really meaningful and um, for professors to know that like, something stuck. And so if there's a professor that you're like, oh, this professor was just, was a spark for me, um, think about how they could possibly be your recommender. They're like, you are already in community with so many people. So if you don't know yet um, or have an idea yet, you should, because you already met probably at least four or five professors. And so you're on your way. Um, for the folks who already know or have an idea of one or more people that could be the recommendation letter, um, some tips and strategies I would have to like open that conversation um, is not only when you ask them like, hey, um, I would like a recommendation letter. I highly suggest for this or anything else you apply to, once the professor is like, sure, or maybe in your email to them to ask around it or the email to set up the meeting to ask, give them more information. So once they say yes, you got your resume, you have the reason why you want to do laid law maybe the link to the laid law page. Don't make them do any work researching what you want to do. You tell them two sentences on this. Like it doesn't have to be long, but something that like shows them that you thought about it. Like, hey, I want to join laid law because I want to do like research on X topic. And, it, and um, I would really love support on these areas. And this is why the program will be great for me. And it shows them that you actually attended a session. <laughs> um, you know what you're applying to. Um, and it helps them do the work of like, oh, okay, like let me write words that match what you need. And so that is my tip that I would say for anything you apply to, send an email that lets your recommenders kind of like review your notes and make a best letter for you. And my final tip that I would say around that is also mention maybe if you're someone um, that has taken either multiple classes or if you want to pinpoint and help this person write your recommendation letter mention how they impacted you or like how your relationship with them is good for the recommendation letter so if they did a, uh, a research class with you you can say like because i took this research class i think that you would make a really great recommendation like those are the kind of tips that i would offer everyone um, as you're doing that ask to make it a little bit easier and that's it. That's my ramble. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of that works for finding a mentor too, right? It's, you know, it had an impact on me. You want to have more of an impact on me in my future? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> um, any other questions from you all? Oh, I see a, a hand, an actual hand, a human hand. Hi. Hi there. Yeah, my reaction button wasn't quite functioning. Um, but uh, I had a question regarding like, I have a mentor in mind. Um, you know, we know each other's names, even though it's like a big lecture. And I, I feel like we're developing a professional relationship, but they're not directly related to what I'd want to do. Like you could, you could figure out a way in which they're sort of related and how some of the work I've done in that class and the questions I've asked them have been related to what I want to do, but it's not like oh, I want behave, I want to do law. This is like a law sociology poli sci professor or something. Um, like, how do you, like, do you recommend that I still ask them if they're, they're one of the only professors that I'm like close with at this school? Or do you think I should wait until next semester uh, when I'm taking more classes regarding, you know, what I'm interested in and then, and then use, you know, that month long worth of relationship and, and submit that? What do you think? I, I have some strong thoughts. <laughs> Share your strong thoughts. <laughs> um, and so this is the mentor piece and not the recommendation, right? Yeah. yeah. 
no, 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 this is the mentor. This is yeah. the mentor. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is the letter of recommendation. Like, who do I ask for a letter of recommendation? Letter of recommendation, I would 100%. Okay, so my answer was going to be different. But, I mean, it's actually similar. Um, 100% get someone that knows you. Uh, like for your recommendation because the letter will be better because they'll know you more um, and probably um, like have more time and then be invested in making sure you get the thing. And so that's my 100%. The other question that you didn't ask and I still want to answer for everyone here is in terms of mentorship, my philosophy is that different people can offer you different things. It's your job to figure out what those things are and then also like prioritize what you need when you are there as a laid law scholar. Like when you're choosing the mentor, like sometimes for some people, you really need someone that's going to hold you to like methodology. Maybe that's not someone that does the same exact topic, but they know how to do interviews or they know how to write a brief. And like you really want to build a relationship. Use that as like a guidepost. For other people, maybe it's really important for you to have support from someone that you feel comfortable um, doing like your big dream stuff with. That's a different kind of professor, right? Um, and maybe like for some folks, a lot of this overlaps. And then for other folks, um, it doesn't. So you get to choose like, oh, what works for me? And think of it about what will be the best support for you in this like five week period. Um, my last note about that um, for mentors is also it's kind of fun for me to think of the ways that you can build new connections. Um, and so don't be afraid of that either. But yeah, mentorship can mean and look like a lot of things. And that's my my rant on the question that was not asked. <laughs> yeah, but given the chat, a lot of people had that same question of like what, how can a mentor, um, should they be like kind of like direct one-to-one -one or like how to pick um, and it's really, again, exactly what Chris said, knowing what you need, knowing that they're all different types of support and thinking about what type you may need um, to, to create the work that you want to create. Thank you so much. Any other questions or thoughts? Again, this will be shared. I'll share, I'll actually, um, Put the PDF of the slideshow also um, probably I'll link it to Handshake so that you can actually go through the application questions and start to use you know use the tips you don't have to go back to the video and pause and write things down and all that um, because that would be <laughs> a waste of energy so yeah so I will share both the slides and the recording um, and I'll we'll be notified when all of this is posted um, any questions yeah come off of mute. Um, I just had a quick question about sort of, again, the logistics of the letter of recommendation. Should the professors send it to us and then we link it sort of through our application or should it be sort of directly sent to you guys through email or laid law as an organization? Yeah, no, it's, um, so you tell us in the application who will be writing, who we should expect the letter to come from, but it is emailed to laidlaw at barnard.edu by the professor. Awesome, okay, perfect, thank yep. you. Yep. Great. Um, I wasn't, just like, is there an application portal or cause I was late to the first meeting, so. Oh yeah, there's, it's a, yeah, there's, there'll be an application link sent around okay. here, yeah. Right, well, the former teachers and myself and probably Christine, let's see if that time is, <laughs> there may not be any more questions, uh, but we have our email. Uh, so if there are things that you want to ask or maybe didn't want to ask to the larger group, then you can direct them there. Or if you're watching this after the fact, watching the recording, hello, thanks for doing that. Um, email laidlaw at barnard.edu if you have any questions about this program, we're really excited to, have, to see so many faces and have so much interest in this. And um, we look forward to this process. So have a great rest of the day, great rest of your semester. Um, finish strong and take a nap and talk soon. <laughs> take care, everyone. Thanks for coming. <laughs>